You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 74. T-Bone gets a little of his own medicine. You know, we love Teron Agarwal from the T-Bone Speaks podcast. Oh, yeah. And when we have him on the show, John, it seems like it always gets into a just a heated discussion. Yep. This time, it just it just went even further, yeah. John. So it be was pre- crazy. Be prepared for some heated discussion, some arguments, some yelling, a little bit of because. cussing. <laughs> pretty much the typical T-Bone kind of show, but... This time we got to give T Bone a little bit back, which we don't, which not everybody gets to do. So I don't know, Wes, are you ready for this? I'm ready for this week on the Dental Guys. This episode of the Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. And by Restorative Driven Implants. Understand, place, restore, and implement dental implant treatment from John and Wes, the dental guys. Go to restorativedrivenimplants.com right now to sign up for the next series of courses and take your implant education to the next level. And welcome back to The Dental Guys. We are broadcasting live from the Voices of Dentistry 2018. And uh, this live stream brought to you by Kettenbach. We want to feature Idenium Kettenbach's product. We've talked about this product on our show before. It is a unique impression material, vinyl siloxane ether, which has some of the properties of our polyethers and our vinyl polysiloxanes put together into one product, which is super accurate and also doesn't mine the blood, which is important. It comes in medium heavy along with, of course, the light body for a combination with that fast set, regular set. Our fast set time is 3 minutes, 30 seconds, and we know about the cross arch precision of this material. We've talked about it before on the show. So if you're interested in finding out more about Idenium, you can contact Eric Cortez at 1-877-532-2123 or e.cortez, C-O-R-T-E-S, at KettenbachUSA.com. Kettenbach, buy smart, buy direct. Wes. You did pretty good on that, man. Yeah, yeah I've been we've been doing it for like two days now, I've been practicing, so yeah. damn good, man. Working. So. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Okay, so last year, mm. if you've listened to our show for a while, it's been about a year since we've had... To Ron Agarwal on our show, otherwise known as T-Bone, but a lot has changed since then because John, as you know, he always brings it. <laughs> yeah, contra- That's no, no pressure. Yeah, last year though, I mean, he really messed with you. He like singled you out, and he just took this I loved hammer, it, but and he was just beating am I on better you like before it? Better because of it? Yeah, you came out like a piece of metal, man. You were just like bam. Like a, you know, that's how the samurais make great swords. That's what it, yeah. Not you swords, sh- swords, 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 swords. swords. <laughs> There's a great sword in in behind here. <laughs> Celebrity Jeopardy, man. I can't never forget that. Yeah. I'll take S words for one thousand dollars. S word. <laughs> it's swords. It's swords. Oh man, man. <laughs> so good. <laughs> So, yeah, but last year was a mess with you, and it was good because it caused you to make some changes. Big time. In your practice. Big time. I love hearing that, man. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah, it was disruptive, which is... Which I what I want. That's what, that's what you want. And, you know, you were talking at that point about stop doing fillings and crowns. So one of the questions I have for you here is what, what are you, where are you at with that? Last year we talked about. Yeah, you were still doing some fillings. Yeah, we're still doing some fillings. Yeah, but how but how much? Rest of them you doing crowns. So let's see. Where's my practice at now? So I'm producing the same. Um, I did probably the month of December. I wasn't allowed to do any fillings, none. And how many weeks did you work in the month of December? Yeah, two weeks. Okay, two and a half weeks. So no fillings for two and a half weeks. Yeah. Was that your best month of no fillings? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best okay. one. So okay. how many days? Uh, I was in the practice six, seven days maybe? So seven, seven days. Okay, seven that's days, yeah. a, a week and a half for most dentists. Yeah. So what's that, has that trend been getting better through the year? Yeah, so now it's at a point where the only time I'll do a filling is if it's part of quadrant care that I'm already doing, uh, with a crown at least in it. Uh, that's the only time I'll, I'll personally do a filling. 
And we're getting to the point now where I'm not doing nearly as many posterior crowns. Um, single units. Single units. Um, so we're getting close to there. I'm, I probably only cut uh, 10 single unit crowns. So what have you added? To, since your production hasn't decreased, you said that. What have you added to your practice that allows you to do that? Well, it's interesting. Um, I haven't really added anything. Uh, we've just created more free time, uh, which has allowed me to put in more implants and more sleep. Okay, so you've just been able to up those procedures. Yeah, because the unintended consequence of having free time is that you work on filling that free time. And if you have a rule that you'll only fill that free time with certain types of things, you or your team happen to find those types of things to be done. This yeah. point right here, mm -hmm. has it, it resurfaces all the time whenever you see somebody that, like a, like a taskmaster that works the reception desk. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you say, "Hey, guess what? We're going to add a day of hygiene," and you just do it. Right. That's what for, mysteriously it happens. It it's happens. Well yeah, Why is amazing. that, T Bone? Because people are goal-based individuals. That's right. Um, we are looking to be led, and we just want to make people happy at the end of the day, right? So if I tell my team members I want twenty fillings next month, I'll find twenty fillings next month. If I tell them I only want to do five they'll pick and choose just that five. And uh, they'll make sure that it's just the right patients to do it on. And that's ultimately the challenge I've laid out to them is I've said, I promise you, if you take these off my schedule, we'll do more. So what's the conversation look like with a patient that you've been seeing for a while and they need a filling? They need a DO on 13. Mm -hmm. And what do you... you is see that it? all they need? Yeah, that's all they need. So you're in hygiene, yeah. doing that check. and it's Mr. Jones, I haven't done a filling in a long time. You don't want me to do it. I did two fillings on, a th uh, on Thursday before I left for Bo Yankee uh, because I don't work Thursdays. And my team asked me to do it because the lady was... Uh, uh, was anyway, there's a, a, a strenuous circumstances there. And I did the fillings. I go, I looked at it. I go, Mayette, I can't believe I still know how to do these. And she looked at me, what do you mean by that? I go, it's been like a solid eight weeks since I've done one. And she's like, I really don't think I want you doing these on me anymore. <laughs> That's a good way to say that. It's just not what you but do But the follow-up is, though, you've got to say, I've got somebody yeah, who can. Yeah, of course, can, absolutely. Right? So that's so the second let's, half So let's get back to the serious part of it, okay? Is number one, uh, uh, Mrs. Jones, you know, you need, a, you need a cavity. You have a cavity on this tooth. You need a filling. The great news is you need a filling. You don't need anything more complex. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to have Dr. Leedy take care of this for you. Um, and but I want you to take care of it, t -Bow. I understand that, uh, uh, Wes, and uh, um, I'm very flattered by that. But the truth is, is quite frankly, I'm not doing hardly any fillings. But you've always done my dentistry. I understand that. Um, I just soon go somewhere else. Wes, do you trust me? Yes. Okay, then I'm telling you that Dr. Leedy does fillings better than me. Okay, let's do it. Sign me yeah. up. Now, so you filled these procedures in because you freed up your time to do these things that you're more passionate about, maybe not more passionate, but more interested in and, and goal-oriented towards sleep dentistry or sleep medicine or, and, then, and then implants. Basically, if you build it into your schedule, the time, it gets filled. You find a way because then I focus on marketing. I focused on... So there's, there's going to be a period where you go backwards. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be okay. a little There's going to be a lull, no yeah. question. But what I found is as soon as my schedule became open, then my team was able to say, okay, we have you meeting this physician this week. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey, we have you going to meet uh, this healthcare company this week. We want you to go speak to their group. You know, all of those things. So all of those things come about from having that time available. And or... I'll do more hygiene checks, and I'll do a better job at those hygiene checks. And we'll, we'll convert patients from quadrant reactive care to more proactive care. And then part of it is also there is a plan in place to attract more of the dentistry I want to do. Because there is, a, limit, there is a limitation uh, in terms of can you go cold turkey and do nothing to attract patients and they just show up? And, and that's not true. Yeah. You know, at, at this stage, four years in, I've cycled through a lot of my that's right. existing patients that need implants right. that were ready to move forward. So, right. I mean, so uh, now you have to start kind of going outside. So now we have to go externally. Yeah. And externally doesn't always mean marketing. It could just mean uh, um, <clears throat> working uh you know, relationship-based referrals. Right, sure. Uh, so, Asking so for referrals. We're, doing, that, kind we're doing that kind of stuff. And, and as you do more implants or as you do more cases, 
uh, those cases refer more cases. And it's, it's just getting over the scarcity mentality that, oh my God, if I stop doing crowns, all you need is one case. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you think your average listener does a, a number of crowns per month? 20. 20. Yeah, yeah that's what so, I So that's, that's 20 times what is it? $800 average crown? $900? 1000 Thousand. I don't think most PPO dentists get a thousand, but that's okay. Are you saying most dentists are PPO? Uh, I would say eighty percent are, if you count eighty percent as most. Okay. The statistically, eighty percent of dentists take PPOs. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's call. Yeah, let's I was call getting paid seven thirty three in uh, two thousand four. Yeah, so it's not much more than that now. But I'm fee for service now. Now, yeah. So, right, right. Uh, so let's call it a thousand with the buildup. Okay, yeah. we'll go there. So that's twenty grand. So at the end of the day, for me. Uh, I'm a, again, traditional PPO practice. That's one and a half patients. I was going to say. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, the thing is, is about time with a doctor is that that generates more income because you're worth more on the hour. And so it's about honing the procedures that make you very profitable for the time that you're there in your practice. You know, one thing that I think is a mistake, especially for a doctor that may be starting out, Say you're starting a practice, okay? And, and even if you started with 500 patients, say you bought out, you know, the old guy down the street, you know, and, and you bought all of his patient records, but you just updated the office, and you're going to walk in, and you're going to start seeing patients. And one thing that I did from the very beginning is I purposed to see new patients that hadn't been to the dentist inside of a year, always see them first in my chair for an hour, hour and a half. Now, some people say that's ludicrous because you lose money doing that. But what that did was it freed me up, and I just committed. I know that 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 doesn't seem like a wise thing to do, and when people hear me say I do that, but my treatment plans average high versus them seeing the hygienist first and me walking in and saying, hi, Mrs. Jones, for 10 minutes and doing a hygiene exam. I would argue that you're not training your hygienist correctly then. I disagree. That's okay. We can all. But that's the beauty of our profession, right? We can all disagree. We can have different ways of doing things. But I would argue that a well-trained team, and I'm not saying you don't have a well-trained team, but I would argue that a well-trained team can present well, the agree same amount that. of dentistry that you can. So you're saying that all new patients should go to the hygiene, hygiene side? I'm not saying that's how they should go. I'm just saying that's the logical workflow that works for 80% of offices. Okay, but I'm not 80%. No, no, of course. And, and that's why I wouldn't say that you should change. So you're saying if you want to do more comprehensive type of dentistry, if that's, say, you're a dentist who is a PPO dentist, and you say, you know, I want to be more like T-Bone. Mm. I want to do more <laughs> comprehensive dentistry like he's doing. I want to do more implant cases. I'm, All I'm, my patients go through hygiene. Okay. So you, and but, you would say that that is, that is the way to focus is to train your hygienists to be able to lie. present uh, that so treatment. Not all my patients go through hygiene. All my patients happen to go through my hygienist, uh, but we have three ways you can become a patient in our practice. Uh, one, we can see you on a limited exam basis for a problem focus. Uh, number two, our most common way is you can come into our practice as a traditional new patient, and all that's driven through hygiene. Or number three, you can come in for a very specific focus. Uh, for example, a consultation, whether you want sleep, sedation, implants, blah, 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 whatever it may be. And then you can come into our practice that way. And that also goes through my hygienist, who also who happens to function as my treatment coordinator in that role. Okay. So the hygienist is the treatment coordinator. So when they In see, my practice. In your practice. In yeah. your practice. So they're coming through. If it's a patient who expresses a desire for comprehensive care, hey, I need a bunch of implants. I know that's mm-hmm. what I need. They still see the hygienist first. It's just yeah, I trust that my hygienist can uh, lay, lay the foundation for the case, mm-hmm. uh, give them an idea of ballpark costs, and then I can come in and kind of go over the details and specifics. You can do the diagnosing. Absolutely. Right. I would argue that she could do the diagnosing, but that's not legal. That's right. <laughs> That's right. They know as much as you do, sometimes more. I mean, amazing. Well, they know more about the patient, which is more That's important. Right. That's right. So the, I'm not, I guess uh, the challenge I don't that say... I have against, uh, uh, you know, the really uh, the challenge that I would say is like, one, if you, your practice that you've built, is it more comprehensive care, meaning like you're doing a lot more like full arch you're doing or is it single tooth quadrant dentistry which is like 80 percent of what most dentists are doing i i would argue that my practice is 60 70 percent single tooth dentistry okay i just happen not to do the majority of it okay Mm -hmm. me personally Mm -hmm. my practice does it my associate does it right so if you're starting out 
Okay. Everything's about time in life, correct? That's right. It is. Right. It's it's yeah. about a phase in a person's life. So let's define mm -hmm. where you're at. That's right a good now. question. All right. So let's go through this. Okay. Yeah. This is part of the. See, this is segue. I wanted oh, to have my notes. Good. Okay. Set you up. All right. So. Um, <clears throat> What I want to talk about are the three phases of a dental practice uh, and what we have to do. So one, there's the general dentistry phase, advanced dentistry phase, and what I call the satisfaction phase. That's good. To achieve each of these phases, we have to have a short-term focus, a medium-term focus, and a long-term focus. Uh, the short-term focus coincides with general dentistry, which is all about survival. Survival, for the vast majority of us, is all about money. Okay? In other words, what does it take for us to survive? Okay, and to me, my goal is to teach dentists to keep that dollar amount as low as possible, mm -hmm. so that creates economic flexibility to then make uh, wise choices uh, to achieve the next step. If we get stuck in survival mode way too long, we never get out of it, and everything we do. So every time, would you say that you're making more money today than you made ten years ago? Oh yeah. Would you say the same thing? Yes. I mean, most dentists would say that, correct? So what I would argue is that when you start making more money, don't spend it. Save it for two or three years, keep at the same level, and use that money to reinvest into your practice, whether you reinvest it right away or you keep it as a, uh, a card that you can say, hey, I want to take an extra day off so I can start doing this type of procedure. I'm going to buy that time away from myself with these funds I've accumulated over the last oh, couple man. of years. So what you're describing is delayed gratification. Absolutely. And, and, and that's a problem that we think that a lot of dentists have. A no, lot of not, dentists it's have. not just millennials. We always say millennials. I, I didn't but say it's that. Not, no, we no didn't I know, but I'm saying, I'm not saying you did, but generally my generation does say that, but it's, it's a problem we all have. I mean, right. I, I have it. We Everybody all have does. It. Everybody we does. We all have it, okay? So that's the short term, okay? Right. That's what I call the general dentistry phase, where you're focused on fillings, crowns, all of those things, uh, the things it takes to basically, you know, build a decent practice, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we get into medium, medium term. Medium term, I've defined as diversification. The things that you do to allow yourself to be diversified in the procedure mix that you offer so that you can make a lasting change. Right. That's when you go from becoming a commodity, which is what general dentistry is and has become, to valuing time. In other words, I can work an hour and do two or three fillings, or I can work an hour and place one or two implants. They cost me the same amount of time, but I produce a tremendous amount of difference in income there, okay? Uh, and I'll focus on the money side of things because money buys us essentially whatever we, it is we want. Let me just ask you about that, that initial phase, though. Mm -hmm. To make that jump from the survival phase mm -hmm. to this next phase, because we were talking about this yesterday, um, where should someone be investing? Because there's a investing lot of what money, money and time. Uh, in investing terms of their into personal, a bank account. Their personal development, though, if they want to mm. learn how to do more advanced procedures, uh, are you saying that you should first do single tooth dentistry and get you know just basically well, you have put your to head put down. some money in the bank? Well, right. Let's, let's come back to this if okay. you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, that's because fine. you're absolutely right. Okay. Because ultimately you have to work on all of them at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So that's medium term. Okay. Focus on diversity. Uh, having the skill set to be able to do multiple different things mm -hmm. so that you can take care of your patients, okay? And then the long term is what I, what I call economic flexibility and freedom, okay? Those are the things where it, it creates you the ability to do what the hell you want, when you want, take as much time off as you want, all of those things. I call that going from, so number one, general dentistry is commodity-based. Going to diversity is about learning to value time. And then going to long term is about learning to emphasize and value your expertise. So in other words, we may do the same dentistry, but I become an expert at that. So therefore, I can charge a greater fee for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in a perfect world, what I'm trying to teach dentists to do is to do, take a sheet of paper, write down, equally space these things out, on, you know, divide a paper into third, and write short term, medium term, long term, and write down in all true honesty, what does it take you to live? Okay, what are your goals medium term? What are your goals long term? And then figure out how much of your bandwidth, because we all have a certain amount of bandwidth, correct? How much of your bandwidth you need to spend on the short term? Okay, if that, if for example, your, your monthly nut is $15,000, let's make that number up, okay? And you've produced $200,000 in income, okay? You are in survival mode 90% of the time, correct? Mm. Because it's $180,000, you make 200 grand in income, uh, more than likely after Uncle Sam, you're constantly in survival mode, okay? Right. You'll, and the problem is you'll never get out of survival mode because everything you think about is survival. Now let's say, for example, my monthly nut is 15 grand and I make 250 a year. 
Now suddenly, survival is 60 to 70 percent of what I do, and now I have 40 percent of my time and bandwidth that I can focus on medium term and long term. Mm -hmm. Then I take that and I divide that into uh, two thirds medium term, one third long term. Okay, so now whatever my goals are in medium term, I'm going to put my bandwidth and the extra money I get towards those goals of diversification. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then let's say like where if you reach a stage that I'm at in my life right now where I still have survival mode, okay, but survival mode represents 25% of what I do. So in other words, for me to make what I need to do just to live pure survival, I need to spend about 25% of my energy there. That leaves 75% to focus on medium term and long term, of which... I spend 25% on medium term and 50% on long term. So the decisions and choices I make right now are all long term focused because I've had to stop worrying about the short term money and I've diversified myself enough over the years to where that's not as difficult for me either. Did I, did I explain that well or is that totally a little Totally understand. Here's what yeah. you just did is you yeah. just replaced, well, you just said what a financial planner, a good financial planner would sit down and talk to a, a person graduating school that moves into their first job. But the problem is no one listens to that person. And and that's the problem. John, well, but, John? I, but I think that, that the problem we're seeing as we're talking, with, especially with folks here about this, is they're in that survival mode is that the focus I see is, well, the, the divergence here is, again, which direction do you go? Do you go into more dental development or do you go into more business development yeah, because I think that's, that's where the, many people okay. struggle. Listen, let me just say this because here's the, here's so the let's thing. Let's have the direct question. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, John. And let's just let's speak to the controversy at hand. Mm -hmm. Is that what are we pushing? Business, the business aspect of dentistry, mm -hmm. or are we pushing the personal development of the dentistry? Yeah, the quality, the quality improvement. You mean the clinical dentistry? Yeah, the clinical yeah, because, quality improvement. Because because it seems like to I me I don't think you need quality improvement. But no, what hmm. you saying? You're saying that someone graduating dental school has produced enough to understand what to do the quality dentistry that they need to do. If they stay in general dentistry mode, yes. If they stay doing single tooth dentistry, yes, single absolutely. tooth dentistry, absolutely. Okay, are and, you? And that's good enough. Uh, it depends. I, you're asking me. The answer is hell no. <laughs> but but here's you, the thing: is you're that asking what somebody. To me, it's all about what somebody wants. If somebody right, that's what we're saying. So if somebody wants a hundred fifty thousand dollars living, be a single tooth molar mechanic and call it a day. Just don't bitch about it. Right. That's, that's all I'm it. Saying. That's I just it. don't bitch that's about it. it okay? Yes. That's if you it. want something more, then do something about and it. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But but then there are people though it's like that something are turned on in me, and I just got yeah. yeah that's but it. that's it though. <laughs> that's because, it. Because it's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. But you have to know where that's heading you. Yeah. That's <clears> not <throat> heading you to where you're talking about stage three. You're never going to get there. No. Never. You're going to be in survival mode. No, you're going to be in survival mode forever. And that's important. And that's okay if somebody's okay with that. So the sell, the sell of the business of dentistry. Mm-hmm. Is what, dude, it's what we're seeing here. But it's, people will say, okay, you just need to learn the business and you'll get to stage three. That is not true. Thank you. you. No, no, no. Thank you. Not no. necessarily. Listen. No, no. You uh, have it, to it know the It depends how you define stage three. If you design stage three as just money, then business will can get you there. Yes. Okay? Uh, you well, can do single tooth well, dentistry. No, no. You can do single tooth dentistry, produce $1.6, $1.8, $2 million. I know people that do those it. Those are outliers. With, with the 50% overhead. Out, those are outliers. Done. Absolutely. But, outliers. Okay, how about this? You can do single tooth dentistry, have a $1.2 million practice. Okay. At a 60% overhead, so that means you're going to take home $500,000. Mm, dude, no. That's an outlier, on. too. No, yeah. it's not. Uh, that's you talk not to practice people. brokers about practices doing over a million dollars, okay? Uh -huh. Single guy doing over a million dollars. It, it's yeah, let me get you something. No, no, they'll get it. Okay. Isn't it rare? Just a Coke will be great. You're saying hey, that... We, water? Yeah, since you're serving, man. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. That'd be thank awesome. You, yeah, yeah, thank you so water. much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, water. Coke, yeah. But you're, you're saying that the average practice over a million dollars, that, that most of those are single tooth dentistry practices? They can be. I'm not saying they can't. I didn't ask whether they no, no. can be. I said, are they typically see, are they typically more comprehensive? Okay, so, so, so now this is from last year's turned on me. Uh, yeah, year's, yeah, yeah. And exactly. I like it. It's, I exactly. like it, okay? So look, okay, so here's the deal. Because we're yeah. arguing, well, hold on. We're arguing that in order to be successful m from a money standpoint, mm -hmm. you're right, there are outliers that are just excellent business and their dentistry sucks, but their business skills are excellent and they're doing well. Okay, those are outliers. The Most of the people that I'm meeting that are doing really well, killing it, mm -hmm. their dentistry is excellent. Now, I'm not saying that always. I'm saying, would, but would you agree mm -hmm. with that? 
Most people that are killing it, their dentistry is excellent. I don't know how you define excellent, uh, but they have diverse mix of procedures. Okay. It's, Would you say that that's probably somebody who has at least invested a lot in themselves, absolutely. continuing education wise? That doesn't mean they're any good. Okay. Uh, you're right. But okay. in general, these are people who care. But let's go they back for a second. Okay? Let, me, let me say why I'm saying what I'm saying here. Okay. The difference is, is people waffle in what they want to do. If mm -hmm. you want to make a million dollars in production and you don't want to do advanced dentistry, you can do it. Just don't take those damn classes and don't waste your brain energy and create noise. Just focus on what, you, what it is you want to do mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what you're good at. That's all I'm saying. I agree. It can very easily, generally speaking, very easily can be done. Okay, I, I firmly believe that. It can be done easily. Now, is it easy to do? No. But most people, the problem is that they get distracted by the quick fix, easy sell, magic bullet. Yes. Is it easy and there, to do? No. And there's no right. such thing as a magic easy. bullet. No. Thank no, you. It doesn't exist. Not in sleep, not in implants, not in general dentistry, not in phrenectomies, nothing. Right. Ortho, Invisalign, there's no such thing as a free lunch or an easy lunch. But it if, doesn't exist. But if a dentist comes to you, okay, just personally and okay. says, it says, T-Bone, all right, what I want to do is I want to make money in dentistry, but I want to know... Like, how do you do that? Is it by getting really define, good at dentistry? I would say define what money is. Well, they want to have... Let, an, you, be, you be the person. Let's okay? just say that they want to make what the average, what USA... Like $150,000. US, US News. No, US News puts us up at the top. What, okay? oh, it's $150,000? No, no, it's like two fifty. The average dentist does not make $250,000. That's what US News and World's Report says. I can tell you that's not true. Let's look it up right here. Let's well, uh, it's No, no, let's look it up. Google it. <laughs> my favorite thing to do, Google shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. Lately, people have been asking questions. I just respond with their Google answer. Yeah, just Google it. Yeah, just Google, just Google it. it. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. But yeah, I guess the, the, the thing I'm saying here is if someone says the pathway to, to they want to do well in dentistry is either they go the route of, if their dentistry is crappy, so what's the pathway? If, your dentistry, if okay. you don't care about your dentistry being good, what's the pathway to making money? Just be a business. Okay. Own a bunch of practices, maybe? Not necessarily. I just treat your business like a treat your treat your. Practice. I was wrong. I, I was wrong. Uh, of course you were. Yeah. <laughs> it is the number one. No, that's not what I meant. What's the average? Yeah, so uh, that's what. I, isn't that what I said? I'm sorry. Why are you arguing with me? Have you not learned <laughs> at this stage of the game? Not. I, 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 read, I sleep Listen, four hours a I'm night. All I do is read. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. So that's let's good. go. Let's come back to this. Okay. You sleep how many hours so, a night? Four to five we hours. You need to work on your sleep hygiene. No, I, I'm pretty good. That's, that's good for me. <laughs> snore loud, baby. Yeah, I snore. I you snore. I, do, I sleep really hard. That's four or five hours. Are you experiencing micro sleep right now? I do. I don't know what those fancy terms are. Okay. I don't go to fancy sleep classes. Yeah, right, right. All right, so listen real quick, okay? So let me get serious. I've been playing a little bit of contrarian here, okay? The quickest and easiest way and the most common thing, if you go and ask anybody around you that you define as successful and you ask them what's the number one thing that made them successful, they will all tell you nonstop continuing education, okay? They'll all tell That's you That's what that. I want to hear you say. Yeah, but... but yes, but they all want to do that. So it's the one thing. If you ask anybody, they will all tell you... The reason I'm where I'm at is because I took nonstop continuing education. And I would argue that that is 100% correct. I'm in the education business, but I would tell you they don't need to, okay, if that's what you want. If you want a quote-unquote quote Medicaid-style practice, the richest dentists I know own Medicaid dental practices. The richest dentists I but know. But again, you're, you're, you're creating an outlier mentality right now. Just because the richest dentists you know own but Medicaid you just practices said successful doesn't, mean, and make doesn't money. mean that the Your majority question to me is of I successful. I want to make a lot of money. I'm saying the majority of successful dentists. Not, but majority not of dentists one, don't take Medicaid. Well, correct. So the majority, though, of successful dentists. You know, are I'm they, just trying to they, play with you. I know. Right? Are they <laughs> Medicaid dentists? Or no, what? of course not. No. All right, let's get serious for a second. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. keep let's going. What do you guys want to talk about for real? I love it. Well, that's well, what I want to know is if, if you, so somebody comes to you and they say, your associate, okay? Mm -hmm. An associate comes to you and they go, all right, so I really want to get, I want to go to that next level. Okay, great. So what first, do they do? First thing I would say is our practice needs you to produce this much. Okay. So I had this conversation with my associate. I said, I want your schedule. I said, your first thing that you have to do if you're serious about what you're saying is you need to be only 75% busy. Okay. So you have room to grow. To grow. Okay. Okay. And then, so what I did with him is I marked down, I created a triangle, and I said, what, what procedures do you do, and what, what are they paying? And I said, as you move up the triangle, no matter where you get to, like even my schedule is only 75% full, okay, I never want to be more than 80% full in my schedule, I just drop the bottom triangle. 
Thank you. So I drop fillings, for example, the least okay. productive thing I do. Okay. So that creates a room as my single unit crown practice, as my implant practice, as my ortho part of my practice, as my sleep practice got busier, and we were reaching that 90, 100% capacity, I dropped the bottom, bottom number, okay, which was fillings in my case. Okay, so now as I continue to grow the next part, then I'm going to drop single unit crowns so that I continue to create space for the next thing to happen. So I, I did that with my associate. I said, okay, if you want to do more, you got to add a new procedure. So we said, and I said, you can't play in the implant game because I own that game. Okay. You just stood ahead and just said that. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I want to do all the implants in my practice. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's, that's, fair. Just, that's just what I want to do. I, I want to do all the implants and all the sleep in my so practice. So what's the CE development that you recommend for, for him? For him, so I said uh, we can do phrenectomies. So we started doing infant phrenectomies. Okay, so each infant phrenectomy pays us roughly about six to $700. It takes him 15 minutes to do. All right, medical okay. billing. Medical billing. Uh, so now I said for each infant phrenectomy you do, you can take two fillings off your schedule. Okay, yeah. and I didn't say this like this is what you can do, like I'm bossing him around. I said this is, what, this is the flexibility... It allows you to yeah, do it. Yeah, it allows you to bring in so you, so more the, productive procedures. So yeah, the absolutely. first thing you told your associate to learn how to do is infant phrenectomy. Well, I said, well, it's because it's a low hanging fruit. It's because it's myofunction. It's, you know, it's. But it's low hanging fruit more than anything else. It's, be it's true be because no one's doing it. No, A, nobody's doing it. It's not stealing from me. It's not stealing from, it's not like we're taking patients and converting them to something else versus something else. We're just bringing I love the way. Uh, look, look at John. Look at John. Why? Infant phrenectomies. Yeah, I don't give a crap. It's not, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's great. So you're just like, hey, man, you're here. Like, I'm really glad you're here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you up, in a room with said, some screaming no, kids. No, no, he has to you're say yes. Love it. If he said no, then he would say no. He's like, he's like T-Bone, tell, tell me what I should do next. You're like, infant phrenectomies. No, no, that's, I said that's the low-hanging fruit. Okay. Okay, because that's So what easy. did you tell him to go learn how to do besides infant phrenectomies? Okay, then I said the next thing you need to do is learn how to advance our Invisalign practice. Okay. Learn how okay. to get your greater case acceptance there. Okay. But that takes longer to do than the infant for next. So did he go take Invisalign course? He is. Did you pay for it or he? He did. Okay. Do you feel that that's what associates should do is pay for all their CE? Define all the CE. When it's, when it's a new procedure that they're learning, something they could not do without the CE. Are they going to take that procedure with them when they leave my office? You better believe it. Okay, then they should pay for it. All of it? All of it. Okay. So you don't believe in a CE allowance? I can provide a CE allowance, no problem. I don't care. I'm open to it if you prove to me first. Why are we going back to this associate conversation? You guys know good and well how I feel about well, this Well, then stuff. let's go to a forget about the associates and let's talk about just a dentist who doesn't have an associate. What's their development pathway? That's what would you advise them to start learning how to do? To start creating room for an associate. Okay. Everything I would do, knowing what I know today, yeah. my whole pathway as a... So you just asked us why we want to keep talking about associates and then the very first thing you said <laughs> is everything goes for no, associates. No, I, I said, love it. I said, That's called I circular said, reasoning, my friend. I know, but let's. I would say... I would okay, so so that's another thing I wrote down. Okay, <laughs> I said let's talk about building a dental business versus a dental practice. Did we talk we've, about we've, that? We've we've talked about that. Okay, so that that's the first thing I would do, knowing what I know today. Now, when I started this, I didn't understand that. I didn't about know what the I was, business. Part. I didn't. Well, I understood business. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that's what I was said. What I was accidentally creating. So, part of see ultimately what holds us back. Okay, so now we're talking about a very different dentist. Let me ask you this though. We, what does it take a dentist to understand the dentist the dentistry business? Mm. Does it take a dentist to understand the dentistry business? Because there's a lot of people that want to know who, what to do. Because if you come to a conference and most of the the yeah most of the uh, presentations are on being a business aspect of dentistry. That's like they're teaching you to be an MBA in your dentistry. I think most people are teaching business most too complicated. Business is pretty simple. But do you need to be a dentist to do understand the dental business? No, of course not. Well, then you why? Need, you need street smarts. So let me ask you this. Are you, are you better off with your time learning the business of dentistry as a dentist or hiring somebody to help you run your dental business and making it a business because mm. it's about these overhead all, and profit t-bone so, so, sure, it's I, about somebody teaching you productive these are not old concepts these are old concepts they're not new right, and that's what i can't understand is why why somebody would want to become a MBA in the dental business that's a dentist that's been trained to be a dentist. I, well, I, I would always argue that there's 
no such thing as too much education. Well, I understand that, but right. what what but, is that, but that's not at the what f- cost is the education taking right. the place? That's of? right because right. productivity you don't you don't make any money learning mm. how to balance the checkbook of your mm. dental business. Sure you do. No, you don't. You, you don't if, get paid if, to do that. If that's a problem that you have in your practice, absolutely. Yeah, but you hire somebody else. You fire that cat but and you move shit, on to the next one. But that shit costs you money to hire somebody else. But and then you have to be dependent. I don't I, think Wes is I, saying I believe in vertical ignore. integration where you know how to do everything in your practice. <sighs> well, I don't think Wes is saying yeah, that you saying ignore you're... the... I think what he's saying, though, is... We we are seeing this push toward okay. You need to come out and you need to learn the business because that's the that's the path. De- well, define business. To me, business is simple. Profit know- and overhead. Okay, great. It's simple. Yeah. Learn that on YouTube. What you need to do when it co- when I say the business, mm-hmm. a I'm talking about something very different than what you guys are talking <clears throat> about right now. But when I say you need to get out and take non clinical courses, I'm talking about patient communication and treatment planning and diagnosis. Uh, that's okay. That's, that's a, that, I'm not saying go that's out clinical. And let- yeah, that's more. That's, that's more, not dental business. You learn that more from the clinical. I, I d- totally disagree, but that's that's okay. Well, I, I don't think any. There's very few clinical dentistry cl- classes teach you how to talk to people and have a personality and recognize their hot buttons. And that's influence, right, because everybody's patients. about teaching how to bring in more patients. I think that. But you know, I argue that you don't need to bring in any patients. You need to bring in but just enough patients. that's what everybody's teaching. Why, why, I, are, why are we I, sitting here arguing about this when everybody... I, I don't know. You're bringing it up. Well, what's the place, though? I guess what we're saying is what's the place of learning how to do better dentistry, which is, you know, that's what we're all about in our no, stupid sure. podcast. No, you know, it's, it's all about that. We're all about, like, we feel like if you learn how to do the dentistry well, okay, yeah, we're not saying ignore the business, ignore the communication, but we feel like that's where we should be spending our time is on that and that the business side, yes, you need to learn it. Yes, you need if to If you want to be... By my definition, but not by true definition, a mediocre dentist, business-wise, then learn how to do clinical dentistry unbelievably well. You'll live. You'll have a very good life. And how much money will you make? Quarter million dollars. Okay, two fifty. So you think that that you would tell again a dentist who is saying, "I want to take my practice up to the next level." And do they have half a personality? If they have a personality. Then you're saying that, that, that if, they, if they have a personality and they focus on clinical education, they'll make a quarter million dollars. Okay. All right. So that if, if the average overhead is say seventy five percent, let's say seventy five percent, they're producing seven hundred fifty thousand, which is easy. I would agree that that's easy. That's, that's easy. why I don't. That's why I don't understand. So you're saying that somebody who really knows how to do excellent dentistry and treatment planning and knows how to do great procedures has half a personality they're, they're only going to make seven they're planning, only going to produce 750 I don't think I don't think treatment planning is Who are those who are these guys that are, are excellent these? dentists who are like understand treatment planning and comp- complex dentistry and they're only producing 750, 750 dude. dude it's impossible You're you're talking about these outliers You don't even like, have to try what? and you can produce 750 Uh well, why don't you look up the what the average practice in this country does Oh it's like 600,000 Okay Am I right? We're not. T- I'm not. I know, I'm right? not talking about those guys. Yeah. I'm talking about people that are excellent dentists. Yeah, people that are excellent dentists that understand are producing treatment planning. How often do you meet these guys? You're saying these guys you meet that are like really great, really great people that would construct in your courses, for instance. Mm-hmm. People that instruct yeah, in your Samir. courses. Yeah, Samir. Like these Samir are guys. Fury. These are. I mean, these guys oh, yeah. are not producing 750. They're producing more. Yeah. 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 Is it because they're great but business when, people? No, it's because they've invested. In time and clinical education. No, I think you guys are totally off base. So you don't think that's you don't you think it's the Come on. their business it's, skills. This is not if or Aaron Elliott will tell you it's not because not. of the business skills, it's because of the clinical no, I education will, I will she got. I always argue that it's your personality and personal skills that will outshine okay. your clinical skills. So selling ice cream to an Eskimo is the best skill that you could gain. I did not what I said. That's what I'm saying. Is no, like if I, I could sell ice cream to an you Eskimo. You guys have become unbelievably clinically based and you believe clinical education is the answer to every problem and I'm simply saying no, that that's not I d- true. I think be I think you can have a personality but John is and saying, sell anything to anybody. Well I think you can and I think it's wrong. That's okay. I'm sorry that you think that's that That's what way. we're asking about is we're I don't saying think it's wrong. We're saying is that the way we should be going? Because I, we're I, we're I, we're looking to make a value judgment. That's what we want to do. We want to make a value judgment. Why we're, can't you have it all? You can have it all. That's great. awesome. You can. I'm saying it's not wrong to be a great business person. What I'm saying is it's wrong to be a sucky dentist. Yep. Uh, be a great business person. Just be a good dentist. Okay. So good dentistry right. is a moral right. issue. In my, in my, well, I, yeah. I think no. Good dentistry. Don't be dentistry, McDonald's, that's okay. man. That's yeah. what we're saying. No, is no, it McDonald's? No, absolutely or, not. Yeah. Absolutely not. You can be a McDonald's. There's a place for that in dentistry. The dentistry needs McDonald's. Yeah. The average turnover in those places is six to nine months. The dentistry needs McDonald's. Dentistry needs McDonald's. Dentistry needs it, but I would the average say, turnover, I would say you'll burn out. Yeah, I mean, dentistry needs it. You but that's, s- you're not framing the question correctly. Okay, how should we frame it? You should say, if you want certain thing, <laughs> I love and, this. and you're bitching about it, then, then what you're saying is correct. 
But if you're saying this is the only way to achieve it, that's your definition of success. Now, what I'm saying is that we've pushed so far. We, we want to complain about the fact that dentistry is commoditized. All right, we're like, oh, dentistry is commoditized. Then we shouldn't be like that. And crowns but then, and, but then we won't. But fillings. then we're like, oh, you need to go take more business classes so you learn how to be less Define commoditized. Business. Learn how to communicate. Yeah, with learn patients. how to. Oh, you need to own two more practices. Like I think patient generated treatment practices. plan is not a clinical class. I I would agree with you. That that's mainly about how to communicate that's a communication and, how to see and diagnosis things. class. I agree with you. That's mm -hmm. not a clinical class to me. Yeah, yeah, I, I clinical would agree. class would be like their how to prep teeth bullshit. Right. Not that saying that class is bullshit. No, but, no, no. You know, like the design of, like the design of the anterior crown prep. You know. But you got people who are like, I want to expand my procedure mix because I'm not busy. Yes, that's a different story. Then that's part of diversification. But the person, here's my argument on that, okay? The person who's not busy because they can't sell a single damn unit crown will not sell complex dentistry. That's, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you. That's Even where, if they know how to do but it, that's the where patient's this. not going to say but yes. But that's where the business training comes in. I agree. So when you see somebody who's in this situation, they go, I'm only producing 500. I want to produce 2 million. I then can, you ask, well, okay, why do they want to produce 2 million? The, is the bottleneck their business skills or is the bottleneck their clinical? I would say most of well, the time the bottleneck is their clinical, dude. They, they suck at dentistry. You can be sucky for like five years in your town and then like people find out. Okay? And then, yeah. then, you, then you either got to move. I don't know how to answer that question to be quite honest with you. Word gets around, man. Uh, maybe. I, so I, you know, I know I, it I does. Think, I think patients are, don't know the difference. Uh, I think the vast think majority of patients don't know the difference. What goes around comes 85, around, 80% of your patients don't care. They think if you treat them well and you're nice to them, they're good. I think there's a lot of people who think that it's all about your personality. I agree with you. But at some point, man, when stuff starts failing, that's not good for Dude, your we're practice. talking about damn fillings. It's hard to make a filling fail. I'm not talking about fillings. I'm talking about if you're trying to say, Dude, I want to add procedures. you're talking about million dollar practice. No, million dollar practice is doing fillings and crowns. A million dollar practice is doing just fillings and crowns. Yes, They're I never doing guy. like implants or anything like not that. Doing com not doing complex treatment. I would, I would say that 80% of 800 to a million dollar practices are not doing anything beyond fillings and crowns. Hmm. Wow. Well, that, that's I guess that's I'm sorry, I've but I, today. I'm sorry I, because if you're I don't, pretty, yeah, I've, do you guys agree with me that they're do doing all single tooth? They're not doing single tooth dentistry. They're not, they're dentistry. They're not doing any comprehensive dentistry. No Invisalign. Define no what? What do you define as comprehensive dentistry? They do inv If you ask any practice, they say I do Invisalign. They do five cases a year, and they'll say I do Invisalign. Mm -hmm. Do you say do you do comprehensive no. cases? Yes, I did. Uh, I did one that's full arch case a year. That's dabbling. That's an eight hundred to a million dollar. Pro you can dabble in dentistry and do eight hundred to a million dollars. I'm telling you, you guys have lost your mind. <laughs> okay, you're completely off base in this. You can dabble in shit and do eight hundred to a million dollars a year. So that's not the point we're trying to make. Is that it's a question of if you want to, if you're advising somebody how to be more successful in dentistry. It, we're trying to pin you down I know, on I know, is but, it continuing but, education but or I'm is it asking, business? I'm asking a simple question. What do you define as success? That because depends I, on the person. I, can't, I cannot make a wholesale recommendation to anybody without understanding where they are and what they want. Okay, so if you give me a scenario, I will give you my advice. But if you're asking for a wholesale opinion, mm -hmm. I would argue that being a better business person is more valuable than being a better clinical in the long run every day of the year. That's wow. what I'll argue with. Now, is that right? Is that wrong? If you ask me personally, I would say it's got to be a combination of both. Probably more clinical than anything else. So in this day and age, because of the dynamic of the economy in dentistry, it's better to be a business person to make a killing than it is to be a clinician. Yes, if that's your sole goal, to make money, then being a better salesman and business person matters more than being a great clinician. I think I think that's true. I think I'm not that's saying your it's only right. goal. I think that's it. Right. Yeah. If that's your only goal, if I agree. If that's with your you. only goal, I agree. You can do a million dollars a year and never do anything that you need to take CE for. It, and and you think that's a sustainable business model I would for say a it's long more, period of time? It's more sustainable than the other things then, we do. Then then we're mediocre and our profession is dead. I'm sorry that you look at it that way. I don't look at it that way at no, all. Oh, come on, because the people that we're making a difference with, that's the five percenters. No, so that's five percenters. But that's not what you're asking me. If you're asking me for our audience, 
then of course, take CE, take CE, take CE, learn how to do it, implement, do all of these things. But that's not what we're talking about, the general dentist. We're talking about the typical dentist. So why do you think that for a lot of newer dentists that the focus is on business? If, if you're saying, okay, personally, personally, you feel that there's a better way, it sounds I don't like. think, I, I would disagree that the majority of the dentists are taking business classes. I'm not saying they're taking them. I'm saying that the majority of what is out there, it's harder to find good clinical courses. Oh, come on. There's lots of clinical courses out there. They're all over the damn place. I yeah, would say yeah. it's harder to find a good business class, a good case acceptance and treatment planning and diagnosis class than to find a good clinical class. It's harder to find a good business class, a good business class. Okay, maybe that's the, maybe that's the word we need to, to talk about is good, def at the, define good. What does that mean? Focus What's on a Im good implementation, who's, workflow, who's doing how to that? do it. So you're saying there's very few people doing business right. classes right. Right. So here's yes. here's what okay. we heard yesterday, T-Bone. I graduated dental school in 2000. I mean, there's people in this yeah. room that teach you how to do business yeah, but that he, I think is bad for the profession. So the mantra... Yeah, and so that's what I'm worried about because I'm not talking about whether it's good business. I'm saying there's a lot more business classes, not necessarily yes, there's good ones. because people are debt-ridden and all they worry about is paying off their debt. They're in survival mode. Okay, so we come back to the short term. If you need a, if you come out of school today, your immediate nut is ten grand a month, correct? Yes. Between student loans, living, a living life, expenses, decent life, decent life. Sure. Dude, that's one hundred twenty thousand dollars. That's right. Okay, to make one hundred twenty thousand dollars expendable income, you got to actually make one hundred fifty grand. So just go to work. Okay, and all you're going to do is work forever. That's it. Mm -hmm. You'll never get out of survival mode. That's right. Okay? So the easiest way out of survival mode when you work for somebody else or when you want something better is to take some level of business-related clinical and classes. And that would be, okay, now we're getting down to brass tacks. We're paring this down. Okay? So let's just make it, let's make it simple. The simple thing, what you just said there, is you come out, you're fighting an uphill battle, you're only profiting 20 grand. Not even. Not even that. After yeah. taxes, not even that. Okay? Depends how much debt you come right, out with. Right, it depends right. on and how much debt. But we're just going to say. If you we're work four days say. a week, you're an idiot. So you need to work six to days sell a week. more dentistry, just, just to sell more fillings and crowns, because mm -hmm. that's what you have to do. That's all you know you how need, to do, That's by all the you way. know how to do right now, to sell more dentistry. Whether you're good or bad at it, just to sell more, you got to sell more to make more money. you just got to, because mm -hmm. you're in survival mode. Absolutely. So we need a course that teaches us how to communicate and sell dentistry. Because most people don't have that gift. Yeah, I think everybody needs that course. Right. Okay, so who's teaching that right now? Paul Homily does. Yeah. Uh, Chris Phelps right next to us does. Uh, we built it into what we're teaching. Um, I, I don't know where else. Uh, you guys keep saying there's more emphasis on business classes, and I can't find any of them. I can't well, off the top of my head. if you go to any head. of the regional meetings, it's the, not, Those it's are 80%. run by idiots. Those regional meetings are run by complete idiots. But that's where the majority of people go, T-Bomb. Well, they're stupid to begin with. Oh, okay. The well, people that go to those meetings are stupid. Okay. okay. So pretty much the problem is it's just people are just stupid. It's really not that the profession is messed up. People are just dumb. Come no. on, man. The majority of the classes are business classes at the regional meetings, which are the major meetings that everyone goes to. And what we're saying is, is that that is telling you that the focus is on the wrong thing. And if you're saying there's only... I'm not you saying the focus is on the wrong thing. You only said there's two I'm playing people. a little contrarian, but you guys keep trying to put words in my mouth, and I'm not going to take it, okay? Yeah, don't take it, I'm man. not going to take it. no way. I'm going to fight back. You guys are wrong. About okay? what? You're off base. You do not need to be a good clinician to make money in this profession. No, we didn't say that. We didn't say you have to be a good clinician to make money. In fact, you, your money. number one focus doesn't need to be more clinical education. Your number one focus needs to be... Your number one focus needs to be whatever it is you want. If you define yourself as being a great clinician and making 100 grand, then take all the damn clinical classes you want. If you define being a great clinician as doing the best class two in all crowns, learn how to be more efficient and take efficiency classes. If you define excellence as making a good living and doing lots of different types of procedures, then take clinical education. It really just depends on what you want. But I think what you're trying to do is you're trying to lump everybody into that we need to be on this high pedestal and that if you don't take this level of CE, you're an idiot. That's what I think you guys are saying, and I think it's absolutely wrong. No, we don't think there's anything wrong with excellent single-tooth dentistry. There's not anything wrong with that. What we're talking about is when someone gets out of school, okay, and they don't know anything about even single-tooth dentistry, even though you want to maybe say they do, they don't. They don't know why they're doing things. They just do. You need to know why. You just need to know if there's a if there's a if there's a cavity in it. Take the cavity out and fill it. 
Yeah, okay. So I have problems with sensitivity with my class two composites. I guess it just put keep amalgams doing, in. Yeah, so okay. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Obviously I know that's not what you really There's think. no mentorship, so there's yeah. nobody in the next room over you can go and troubleshoot this stuff with. Who says? Because that's the case. They're not. It asks, asks More, so, most of the time. Okay, you're probably right about most that. Most of the time. Come yeah. on. You're probably right so about that. So if you're brand new and you, you're getting, you have problems with your then class Then go take twos. a class two class. Yeah, that's what we're but saying. But you only have to go take the, do that on YouTube. Do that on YouTube. Yeah. So you can learn class two composites from YouTube. If, you, if your problem is sensitivity, yes. Okay. You tell me what going to work on a Typodon is going to do for you on that. There's no I mean you can't work on a type of They don't have sensitivity. So don't go to composite class. Go to YouTube University to learn how you do class two Absolutely. composites. Absolutely. I 100 okay. believe that. All right. All right. Crown. Save prep. your money for something better. Okay. okay. All right. How to prep a great crown? I think you can learn that on YouTube and some type of dons too. So okay. not reps. Not endo. sitting in your office prepping type of dons. What if you practicing? do that? That's what fine. about endo? Endo, I think you need to learn on real human beings and real teeth, extracted teeth. Okay, so Rex. So I think you're going to have a hard time with me because I learned all that stuff by working on extracted teeth. Oh, that's okay. great. That's, that's how we great. learned it. That's how we okay. learned it, so, too. So I don't believe you should spend money on those things. I think those are things that you can learn by watching people, by watching on YouTube. I think all your money should go to advanced clinical education, the diversity, the medium term. Mm -hmm. All your money mm -hmm. in clinical education should go to diversity. Now, if you're an idiot and you don't know how to do a class two, maybe you, and you like take a YouTube class and it still doesn't work, maybe you should go take a class on that. But that person that still can't do it after they watch YouTube doesn't give a shit. Okay, and they, they don't care. They just want to make money, and they want to, they don't love dentistry. They just want to collect a paycheck and go home. Yeah, that's true. I My wife's a psychiatrist. She told me that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your so your advice to somebody who's like, I want to just, I want to know what to do next when they're when they're when they're younger. No. Is you say, all right, I want you to go to YouTube. No, my learn advice. Some stuff. My no, no. Let me give you my advice. Okay, so now let me give you the direct answer. Okay, you're coming <laughs> yeah, out of yeah, school. Yeah, I knew this was coming eventually. You're coming out of school, correct? Yeah. And you're you got a job at any group practice or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have <clears throat> basic ma basic skills. You think you have more than that, but you have basic skills. And you're like, hey, I have a desire to be good and great in my profession. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to make sure that you have that desire. Where would you suggest I go? Okay. Are you willing to struggle a little bit as you make more money and live the same lifestyle for the next five years? Mm, tough Important conversation. Question. Yeah, that's a great question. Right, so are you willing to do that? Yeah. Okay, great. So what that tells me is you have a desire and motivation and you're willing to put all what, your money back in the What if I said no, though? Then I would say just learn how to do class twos and crowns and okay. learn how to be okay. more efficient at them. That's a good answer. Yeah. And I think that's, that's exactly I think that's how that's we what feel. people need to, we feel that way. Yeah, we're not disagreeing with that at all. And that is I just don't think answer. you have to be great at them. You don't have to be great at... I, I want you to be great at them, but you don't have to be great at them because your attitude tells me that you don't want to be great. Mm -hmm. If you're unwilling to get right. there. I mean, this is, I agree. It's human dynamics, okay? Yes, I mean, we're fighting an uphill battle trying to convince people that don't have the desire to do something they don't want That's to right. do. That's right. Forget right. it. Just move on to but the if next you Yeah, it's, it's all noise. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean half the questions you guys are answer, answer, answering today are asking today are a little bit more noise-based because we're talking about fulfilling a prophecy for people that, that right. we honestly shouldn't care you about. preach to the choir, and that's, you know, those people are already doing it, mm -hmm. and the people who don't care, the, you're there's saying no, there's it's just really not worth tell it. Them. It's not worth it. I'm, there's nothing you or I are going to tell them to make them change. That's going to make them want it. No. Right. Yeah. No. In fact, we should. In fact, we should encourage them not to take advanced CE because they will screw that up. Okay. So if you meet dumb people, and I call it, what I say dumb is I mean people that are dismotivated or unmotivated about dentistry, don't encourage them to take any advanced classes because so, all they're going to do is screw okay, it up. Okay. So what? Here's the thing: is that in the difference in dynamic between. Coming out of dental school in 2003, John coming out in 2007, is six. that six? <laughs> sorry, John. <laughs> sorry. That we we never experienced lunch and learns from outside. That yeah, from corporate coming from in, corporate and coming in, telling us corporate mean manufacturers. No, 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 we that we only corporate dentistry. We we okay. never had so once DSOs. Yeah, DSOs coming in. So. We, we during dental school you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, during dental okay, school. Okay. So yeah. right coming now, in and going, hey, you guys, you know, you don't know anything about business, so you just need to come work with us. Work we'll with take us. care of everything. We take care of it all. They're the, hearing that. What the, is that creating? Kind of right. What is that creating? Well, they're kind of right from a the standpoint of they don't know anything, right. but their solution is to come 
hey, just come work for us, man. Well, yeah. they're winning at the game. 62% they of are. graduates yeah. are going to work for them. And I would argue that instead of arguing with that, let's go back to my original argument. Mm -hmm. Why don't we teach dentists that actually care and have good practices to learn to bring in associates so that these dentists that are graduating school had somewhere to go work? Okay. So, your focus, so your focus is on the dentists who care. So if, how about this? There are 5,000, roughly 5,000 graduates per year. There are not 5,000 uh, private practice associateships per year available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so. What percentage of the 5,000 care? Care? Estimate. I mean, like, care whether yeah, they, they, they work? Yeah, the, the, they aren't care the, about being great dentists. Yeah, they care about being great. They aren't the My ones My definition that, of great? Yeah, yours, yours. Your personal definition. 10%. Okay. okay, so five, I came out of school not caring to be agreement. great. We're in complete I came agreement. out of school not caring to be great. I agree. But you wanted to be good. So the 10%. I didn't know the difference, to be quite honest with let's you. Let's do this. The 10%, let's talk about their track. They'll, they'll, find, the, they'll find the private practice associateships. Okay, so what, what are we teaching the 10%? Uh, I would first teach them how to uh, continue to stay at single unit teeth, at crowns and fillings. Get learn really how good to, at learn how, I would tell them to learn how to talk to patients, identify patients' needs, their hot buttons, focus on communication and diagnosis, mm -hmm. good. and then as they learn how to get patients to say yes, and they get bored because too many patients say yes to do fillings and crowns, then you can start expanding beyond that. That's good advice. So what would be the next step for somebody like that? What would okay. be the next step? Because uh, we completely okay, agree. Okay, so now the, how, how far have they expanded? Have they started doing implants? This is somebody that's not doing, there's restoring implants. Restoring, restoring only? Yeah, they know okay. how to restore. Okay, but they're, they're dedicated excellence. They learn how to get patients to say yes. Yeah, they're they, good communicator. Good communicator, somebody who does good single tooth dentistry and knows how to restore implants. Then I would tell them that if they're restoring implants, then that means there's implant practices, stop. implant patients within their practice. So the yeah. easy thing to do is to, to uh, fulfill the need and learn how to place implants. Okay. Because you're saying they're restoring implants. So if you're restoring implants, that means you, your patient base has patients that are willing to accept implant treatment. So why should you be referring that out? Yeah. Okay. So to me, there are three easy. Uh, three really easy, low-hanging fruits in all practices. Implant dentistry, sleep apnea, and orthodontic treatment. Mm -hmm. Tooth movement. Okay? The easy way to find out if you have a potential for implants is to go through every day and count how many missing functional missing teeth you have in your practice <clears throat> for two weeks. Most people will find out that about 20 to 25% of their patients are missing a single functional tooth. Okay. It's awesome. Okay, so that, that way you can see that there, the opportunity exists. All you need is a 10% case acceptance. 10%. That's all I'm asking for, okay? With sleep apnea, I don't even need them to count anybody. I just need them to read some literature on Google, and we, it's probably estimated that roughly 10 to 15 to 20% of your patients have sleep apnea or difficulty breathing, okay? And are untreated, time. that are untreated. That, that are untreated, absolutely. And orthodontics, you just need to count how many patients of yours have uh, uh, have crooked teeth. Or just relapses. Yeah, exactly. How many people have crooked teeth, minor crooked teeth, and then there's your patient-based opportunity there. And I, I'm of the, I'm of the cons concept that if you, if you give your patients a chance to say yes to the best for ideal treatment, you only need 10% case acceptance. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's true. So, okay. So I those think are people the that argue about 90% case acceptance yeah. are either lying or yeah, they only fix broken teeth. John, oh, what yeah. was Frank Spears? And he's like 20%. 20%. Yeah, I think you only need 10% case acceptance. Yeah. So, okay. So if you got somebody that gets those, those first three things, I think those mm -hmm. are great. Okay. What about the, somebody that's a good communicator, mm -hmm. okay, and they are expanding their clinical skill? Mm -hmm. What is, I want to talk about these, some of these people go astray in the mm -hmm. business world at that point, okay, because they start going, they start hearing stuff about but, but, but tell me how to take I got, it to I the need next to hear, level. Because I'm not hearing it. So well, what I want to know, is. you mentioned something just a moment ago, and I don't know if you want to go there. Maybe you I'll don't, go anywhere. About what's bad for the profession. Uh. I think, I think personally, what's personal, my personal opinion here, what's bad for the profession is teaching people to build fast startups and then sell them. Man. I think that's bad for our profession. Man. And that's, that's, we believe you. Because we see people that do care. I don't believe that they have to be great clinicians uh -huh. to be good dentists, okay? But I do believe that teaching people to build fast startups to sell them for a profit is an unsustainable uh, movement that will only make our profession worse. So, because you see people that do care about it get into sometimes these, they, they hear about a great business idea like that, mm -hmm. and they go off. Invest in the market. They go off, exactly, exactly. And that's the thing that I think many times but derails. Only, only like 5% are successful at that, 10% maybe. At, at, at creating a startup and selling it. No, no, that, 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 no, no, I'm saying 
at venturing into the multi multi ownership practice. Is that right? Is it five? Only I don't five know exactly. That would be a guess. What like. I would define as success. It's hard. Most people are better off saying as single owners, mm -hmm. single practice owners. Right. Like so. In fact, okay. Let, let, let I wrote this down too. So here's another food for thought. How many times? And you guys probably won't won't uh, won't fall into this category. Okay. But how many dentists have you ever heard that says, you know what, I just want to start over and rebuild my practice? And rebuild my practice. Yeah, like start from scratch. I would do it over differently. I mean, you hear that time to time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. you guys are old enough to, to understand yeah, that. I, okay? Yeah. okay, so what I say is rebuild your practice within your practice. So start making, if you work four days a week, make Friday and Saturday your ideal practice. And that's a common business you know, model. Basically, shut the doors down. Not physically, but you shut Grand, it down virtually. and rebrand, re yeah. reopening. And that's commonplace ac across business. Other businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. and it works. It works. So why not do it in our practice? It's totally doable. So why open, to me, why open a second practice but when it, I can open Friday and factor. Saturday in my existing practice? Fear factor. For mm -hmm. Fear. Yeah, yeah that's it's fear. It's, it's fear of like not making enough money. Yeah. I think, no, I think people are, uh, they are disillusioned of this allure that multiple practices, some, some damn panacea, and I'm not saying it is or isn't, but I'm just saying it's not for the... Because if you want multiple practices, then you need to do more business training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot more. A lot more. Like, un unbelievably a lot more. Yeah. And that's, but that's the thing that we're, we're bombarded with, a lot of discussions with this. Because but I think, it is you, this, I think it you is guys this. talk a little bit on your high horse a little bit about that. I, I don't think clinical dentistry is the end-all, be-all that, that people make it out to be. I think that you have to be pretty good at what you do, and much better at how you talk to people. Well, I agree you have to be excellent at talking to people. There's, there's, there's people that can't talk to anybody, and they're not going to sell dentistry. I agree with you. But I think the pendulum has swung very, very, very far I disagree. I think away you guys are... from good clinical dentistry. The focus, I mean... Well, you, define good clinical dentistry. Somebody that you can actually ask them, why did that implant, why was that implant a failure versus a success? And they Dude, can actually mechanics, understand. Dude, mechanics, for God's sakes. Yeah, but they don't even understand this, man. Dude, I took, I, I drilled a hole... I put an implant in that was bigger than the hole. The bone then filled in and attached to that implant. Yeah, and that's all you know about it, right? Well, I mean, I know more than that, yeah, but that's you, all you, know you should little, know. Yeah, okay. But all that's right. all you need. To, if you're dabbling, okay, doing 30 to 50 implants a year, why do you need to know much more than that? If you're, if you, why do you need to know much more than that? If wow. all you're doing is 30 to 50 implants. Well, you, that's how you feel? I'm, I didn't say that's how I personally feel. I'm saying for the person doing 30 to 50 implants, why do they need to know more than that? Why do they What's need wrong to know with more that? that? Because What's wrong with knowing that? that because, knowing just, because you're going to have failures. Because you're going to have so failures. So you're going to have 5% failures. 5% failures. That's, 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 that, that's, that's pretty bad, That's man. pretty bad. 5% failures in implants is bad? Yeah. yeah. If, if you don't know... 5% failures in yeah, implants no, no. is bad? No, what we're saying, the point is not 5% failures. I think you're going to have much higher failure rate than if that. If you don't even all, understand don't why, even know understand the biology other than just throw it yeah. in a hole. Yeah, dude, come on. Dude, you're going to like... restorative issues you're going right. to have. You don't understand yeah, sagittal root positions. You don't understand cone bean technology. Yeah. You know, if I you mean, don't even understand guided surgery, the, you have to research about, the heck out of yeah, this you're stuff, talking about, dude. you got to go to school. Why do you... You have, have, you yeah. have an educational forum. 3D yeah. dentist. You know, I mean, we know you this is know, not how you really feel. And this is not messing. how you really feel. You have I'm to know with your you guys stuff. That what you what you're saying is incorrect. What did we say? What's what, incorrect? What you, what I hear you saying. Now, what you say and what you I listening hear. listening to our show? I'm listening to it right now. <laughs> no. What have we said? Yeah. What are we saying that's what incorrect? What I'm hearing you say is that if you don't learn dentistry at the highest level, you're moron. You're no, useless. That no, you're no good for our no. profession. Now, what we're saying is you should always be seeking to know more. That's sure. all we're saying. But I don't agree that Do you, you need to know so, anything so about dentistry, biology. Okay, so here's no. the thing. Dentistry, you're saying, here's what we say. We say that as a clinician, you signed up for a lifelong learning career. No, you didn't sign up for yes, that. You, you signed did. up for four years of education. No, you didn't. That's not what we're saying. We are saying this. You signed up for it. It's called continuing education for a reason. Yeah, you can get that at your local dinner study I don't club. care where, listen, you signed up for it. And what we're saying is, is if you're doing it right, if you're doing it right. Define it, right. Well, what we're saying is the, the 10 percenters. So you're saying if you're not in the 10 percent, you're not right? I don't, no, we're saying that if you... Because that's exactly what you just we're said. We're saying about the, ex the example you gave about somebody who's doing 30 to 50 implants right. and doesn't know anything more than put a screw in the hole... 
I'm okay. being very simplistic. I know, on that. I know, I know, but I mean, the, there has to be more than that, or else well, there's going to be big problems that you're going to have in your practice. You know, that's what we're saying. That's I don't agree with that necessarily, but that's okay. Hmm. So, so, so basically, what you're saying is that you're saying that when the dental guys say that you should take your knowledge to the next level, because that's the buzz around our show. Yeah. Okay. The buzz generally around our show is that, hey, help me take it to the next level. Teach me something. Pare down the research so that I can apply a pearl to my practice tomorrow in a clinical-based way that will have an impact on my success rate, on what I'm doing, and then it would change the way I practice. You're saying that that's teaching it wrong? I didn't say that. Yeah, I you said, did. You said no. that you said we're wrong. I said you're wrong for saying that if you're not in the 10%, you're not, you don't care about our profession. No, we didn't say you didn't care about the profession. You say you're doing bad dentistry if you don't learn the excellent way of doing it, and then he defined excellent as the 10 percenters. No, I think what we're trying to get across If is, I said that I was misspoke, yeah, we yeah. could go back. No, so, okay. no. no. What we're saying is that if, if all you know I redact is, that. Yeah. If all, <laughs> if all you know is how to put the screw in the hole as an example that you gave, you know, and, that's, and you said that's all you need to know. Why do you need to know more than that? And, I, and I'm saying, okay, I would, really? I would argue that 5% of people know how to understand, understand the biology, the true biology of implant dentistry. Mm-hmm. 5 to 10%, max. And you don't think that really that's that important? Well, I mean, we're doing 2 million implants a year in this country, and if only 5 to 10% of them know that, that would tell me that it's, it's not as critically important as you think it is. Well, that JADA article that said that general dentists are having over 20% failure rate would, that, would concern me. Sure, that, that concerns that, me too. Yeah, so right. do you think it actually is maybe an issue? And then clinically, only five to, no, could, I that, would could argue, there be a relationship? I would argue that they're, they're doing implants on the wrong sites. Okay, so let's the go wrong back. Sites. So you don't the wrong think cases. it's a lack of knowledge? Isn't that a lack of knowledge? Yeah, of course, of course right, okay, so here's, yeah. here's, so here's, why, our, here's why our show... It's resulted in a 20% continue. failure rate in general dentistry and implants. What we're saying is because they don't understand the biology and they don't know how to choose a site because it's basics, man. If you're basics, like you say, you don't really have to be John, amazing to get great implant John, success, and we can't even get more than 80%. John, we're talking a very, very complex procedure that requires a lot of education, CE. Let's go back to the original thing that you said, T-Bone, that people don't need to get any education in. It is crown preps, and the JADA article that was released, oh released last fall said that Jeez. 87% of the impressions received, this is thousands of impressions at the dental lab, 87%. Are deficient. Are no good. Are, yeah. are no good. And you know yeah. why they're no good? 50% of the 87% don't had do tissue retraction. over the margin. Yeah, so, do so, and you're no. like, dude, we're good? So, dude, we're good. We're yeah. good. We're good. We're good. No, we're not. We need to learn how to do this stuff. Yeah. We are technicians, and we have to learn how to do it. Because you're making it sound like, hey, people just go to YouTube and learn how to do it. No, you don't learn how to pack cord on YouTube. You do, actually. You can't No, you don't. You have to YouTube do it, it in the reps. But you said it. Did you go ahead and just learn how to do it? No, you can't well, you do it. You have to learn. Here's the question. All right, so if I go learn how to do something on YouTube, for example, and by the way, I disagree with complete online, all, all are learning online, but what are you going to learn in a lecture? I Any didn't different say lecture. Well, then how else it's hands how? on, but you have to learn it somewhere. You have to, you have to see the fundamentals. I of don't it care somewhere. where you go, yeah, but you're you going to get, you're going to get anytime you go to hands on. And this is why we agree lecture. with you that you mentorship is dead. There's no mentoring going on. It's like, mm. Hey, can you imagine? Can you imagine? I don't think mentorship dead. I think uh, people, I think menteeship's dead. Well, hey, listen. So the problem is with the mentees. Mentees. I think people don't want to be mentored. I think there's plenty of people that want to do mentoring. I just don't think people are mentally ready to be menteed because they get their feelings hurt when somebody tells them they don't. So do they something can't right. be critically. They can't be. Nobody accepts constructive criticism. That's not what I nobody. said in the car. Just not nobody. You, but most people don't take constructive. That criticism. That sucks. Then. Then how do we teach somebody to accept constructive criticism? I don't know. That's that's a very good question. That's Ask your beyond, wife. She's a psychologist, uh, psychiatrist, psychiatrist. But, uh, sorry. Uh, so you think that's the problem is more with the newer the newer dentists who don't want to be mentored? I think a good percentage of them don't because I think good percentage of them this is a means to an end. It's an eight to five job. I want to make my hundred fifty two hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I want to live my life. So they're good with that. They're good with that. And that's how many people out of the percentage 5,000 that graduate? Let's call it 50%. So we should just basically say, hey, man, we're doing awesome. We're killing it. So let's just keep talking to each other and forget about these people. Yeah, so I, I would. So I we would, should change I would, our mantra. I would, I would, no, I'm not. Because it benefits level. us. People no, no, like us sitting no, here right now. you should not change your mantra. No, no, I mean, people, should, people like you, us you are benefiting. You serve your market. It. And your market is looking for that, correct? So I don't think that you should spend your time wasting it on the people that aren't going to change no matter what you do. 
Mm. So do you, I hate to say it, but you know, Wes and I've talked about this is like the worse it gets, the the better it benefits the people who care. Of course. And, and it's sad. Yeah. So, true. so <laughs> instead of trying to save, try to save the people that don't want to be saved. I'm not yeah. worried about them, dude. Just stop worrying about them. Yeah. Just so, get what, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hone in on the niche that I believe can make the biggest impact. Yes. And by, by your definition of impact. Well, the people who the people who don't just see it as an eight to five job. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but, so that's but, the fifty. But your definition of impact is different than my definition of impact. Well, that's I agree with that. Everybody's definition of impact. Yeah, because is you want be people different. because you're you're seeking the dentist that true that seeks pure excellence from a clinical and scientific level. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay, I would say so. so yes. I'm, I'm not. I'm I'm seeking the dentist that looks at excellent clinical I, excellence from a workflow perspective. Okay, but those are both. Those are Let's similar. Hand hand. Those are similar ideas. Similar, but they're different. Similar but ideas. Most people don't want to learn the science. Yeah, I agree with you, and and we and we lament that. But you have. Okay, but okay so it doesn't what's mean missing? That, but but if, but you're saying yeah. here that we basically have to just forget about a large percentage of the dentists that are out there. That are I'm the, saying you'll kill yourself if you keep trying to worry about them. Yeah. Not okay, not so, figuratively. So last year when you said if everybody was to take an associate on in the in dentistry, if everyone in the country then DSOs would stop existing. Then DSOs would stop existing. But the problem now you're saying I'm hearing you say that these people don't really want to learn. So should we want to why should we want to take associates on? Because fifty percent of them do want to learn. So only take the ones that do want to learn. But by by definition, those are the only ones that'll be drawn to you anyway. Right. Like through the interview process, you'll you'll get rid of sure. the rest. Well, of a lot of people are just looking for jobs. Sure, and you'll 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 sniff those out pretty quickly, correct? Because do you want somebody that wants in your practice? Do you want like just like my <laughs> practice? Do you want somebody that wants a job, or do you want somebody that wants to make something of their life and their career? Well, I would think that everybody that's looking for an employee wants somebody who's no, looking to. Some people are looking for somebody to produce three thousand dollars a day by right. any means necessary. Oh, that's true. That's true. But I, the, again, you have to define. Make a great life and career for that. That for them, that could well, mean I, producing three thousand dollars a day, and that's all they care yeah, about. Yeah, but by your side, they would have to have a similar definition that you do, right? Just like I get a lot of grief because how I pare down my associate mm -hmm. my associate interview. Yeah, uh, because I do pare it down unbelievably small. Uh, Which I don't think there's a wrong. No, I, 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 don't I think, think that's it's wrong. wrong. No, I, think, that's I don't wrong. think that. I think it's wrong for the general population to heed my advice on that. Okay, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's wrong for me. No, because, because you have a different happy. goal. I have a different goal yeah. and different happiness Agreed. level. Agree. Right. You know, I, but but I'm also willing to tell my associates that these are, there are certain procedures that you're not going to do right uh, now. So, I but I, what I've fine. heard you say though is if there's only say 10 percent of these dentists who actually do want to do g great by your definition. Well, you told me you said you think there's 10 percent. Or so that care that want to learn clinical and scientific ways, okay. And like peer, fifth, and that can re, that can like quote the literature like you guys do. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who who cares because new new no, dentists think, can't think, quote I, the literature. No, I think there's a lot of people. I think there's a lot of people that care. I think there's a lot of people that care. I just think there's not a lot of people that are willing to go beyond, above and beyond, to ex to get to that level. Mm -hmm. But from an associateship standpoint, you still stand by your your statement that if everybody that there's enough associate, you think like you feel like there's enough associates out there for the people who are looking, that that are not just looking for eight to five jobs, or do you think we're just headed toward more and more and more of that eight to five job mentality, and we're basically just going to see, uh, uh, just a great exodus of people who are looking to do great stuff? Do you feel like there's any hope for it, or do you feel like we're just heading that way? I, there's always hope. We, we're, we're America, right? There's where this whole country is built on hope. Uh, so I think there. I unfortunately think there is hope, but I think our profession is heading towards a commodity basis. Mm. Right. And do you think dentistry is getting better or worse? Uh, I, I, Clinically, I think de I don't know how to answer that question. I think that's either a yes or no. It's a yes or no. Do you think it's getting better or worse? In what way? Clinically. Clinically. Probably a little bit worse. Yeah, that's what we're seeing. Probably a little bit. Unfor the how unfortunately, about this? let me let me answer it this way: the average has gone down. I agree. <clears throat> why yeah. is that? I mean, I, that's a, that's well, a why is that? Because well, the, the, there's the, there's no you, single answer to that, but that's a but, big answer. No, no, but listen, dental schools are teaching less mm -hmm. because there's more dental schools, more students per class from an economic perspective. There's less patients to go around. You know, you know, a lot of dentists don't prep bridges when they come out. There's a lot of there's a lot of clinical aspect there. A lot of dentists are going to work in uh, medic quote unquote Medicaid style offices where there's not an emphasis on anything beyond drill, fill, and bill. A lot of dentists are going to work at the smaller 
non-organized DSOs where there's very little clinical education protocol behind it and their focus is on produce, 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 pay the bills, pay the bills, pay the bills. Now I'm referring to small base DSOs, not our very large base DSOs mm -hmm. where they have good organization in place and they're built for sustainability. That's a different type of DSO. Um, so I think uh, that that's one of the reasons that the average is going down. Mm -hmm. it, it's, there's, there's not from a lack of education or lack of lack of uh, desire of the top 20, 30 percent. It's just a lack of... Uh, okay, so knowing that, knowing that, what we just said there and what you answered, which I totally agree with, okay, what can we do? Who's we? Okay, you? The us, the us, the uh, right those here. that care. Right, yeah, people, that, care that, yeah, care. We, okay. people that care. What can we do to impact? We're not going to impact everybody, mm -hmm. okay? But what can we do to impact a few? To help dentistry just still stay. There's got to be some outliers, and we're going to become outliers, T-Bone. Focus on the outliers. Mm. Focus on the outliers. Focus on the outliers. Do everything you do to focus on the outliers. Some people in the middle will come along. Yes. Okay? Because to me, even if you don't impact the, the non-outliers, if you can just get them to recognize that something else exists, you move them one step down the funnel. So mm -hmm. you try to find the rainbow makers, and you focus on those, mm -hmm. and you and you hope that the rainbow makers will teach others also. Maybe those mediocres, they just mm -hmm. kind of mentor those a, a little bit, yeah. and you get some of those people to, to do things. Now you. What would happen? Uh, on a side note, what would happen if we were able to to convince my generation? My generation is thirty five to fifty five. Yes. Uh, to spend one day a week in dental school. Man, mm -hmm. it would be amazing. So, so there's your solution. Be amazing because teach, my, of, gen teach I'll, my generation to I'll go tell teach you, because most people in dental school are like seven. My biggest influences were true. also private practice private yeah. practitioners. Now, let me ask you this: you you have some training, th uh, you know, things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Of the people that come to your training, which is a lot, okay, whether it's you know training for CEREC or how to do that, how to implement that, or whether it's sleep dentistry, um, sleep apnea treatment. What percentage of those people do you feel like fully leave and truly implement that? Um, and full, My definition of fully implement? Yeah, your definition of fully implement um, it. Probably 20%. 20%. Fully implement. My definition is high. I have a high standard. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, so, you so have you tracked that? It's hard to track because nobody tells you the truth. And it's a lot of mm -hmm. work for me to track it. Like right. I have to call people. and. Okay, so what would it take to take that number and double it? Or just take it to 50%. There's nothing more I can do. It's all about what the person that comes to the class Okay, wants so to what do. do they need to do if the, 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 to get 30 more percent? What do those people that leave? In other words, what's not working, what's not working? in their practices? What are you seeing that, that they're, they're, what are their biggest roadblocks? They're not roadblocks? bringing up team members along. Hmm. Okay, so it's team members. Buy in. So, but what I'm could not, they? You can't blame it all what, on team no, members. No, but buy in from the team. And it's okay, leadership so, on their end. They're not holding team members accountable. Okay, so, but what can they do personally, personal development wise? To, to get the missing piece involved, to get that 30%. To Slow get down. Hmm. Hmm. So I think I, I So implementation, believe, you go back Monday morning, it's just like, it's oh a my shit gosh, show. it's a crazy, I got to yeah. show it's, up and I got to do it. It's back to normal. There, there is, like, 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 so, like, for example, when I go to a CE class, I block off time, two or three hours for yes. that Monday I get back mm -hmm. to we talk, talk about to my this. team about, Hey, this is what we learned. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Because usually you wait till the time comes and it's three weeks later. It's and too you, late. You yourself have forgotten half, what, three quarters of what you've learned. It's too late. Okay. So yeah. to me, that's Yeah, that's you really the first influenced challenges. me to do that more. Well, thank you. And thank you. in this last year, that's been something that I've been intentional about since yeah, we talked. Yeah, I do want let, people to have good, let's, good education. Let's talk, about, <laughs> let's talk about how you've influenced us. Oh, but that's us. good. You've influenced me Let me in talk about how you've influenced us because you have influenced us in a great way. And listen, for those that are listening to this right now, we do like to banter with teams. Of course. Yeah. I yeah. like it, too. You know, I love it. It's so fun. Like, the more you banter, the more I take the contrarian position. Yeah, and, and I good. love it's it. Good. And I love poking it. Poking so, the bear, man. You're so poking what, the bear. So what you all have to realize is that behind the scenes here, there's a relationship yeah. that is is close. We're all doing a lot of similar things. We're all doing a lot of similar things. We all we really want... We agree on most everything, by we the do. way. Yeah. We do. We do. Minus the need to know every nuance of the science. Well, but that's just the geekery in us. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so that aside, we, we are aligned very closely because we, we truly have hope. John and I have hope yeah. that you can make a difference. And because this is America, 
and anything can happen, for goodness sake. So, Wes, talk about how T-Bone's influenced you this year. So, let me just tell you right now. So, I, I went and I got clinical education um, in how to do and how to identify and treat obstructive sleep apnea at Spear Education. I came away you got from... science education. I got science. Definitely. I got science. There's a very little implementation at that course. They do bring somebody in that just touches on that, but it's very, very, very little, Okay. So I came away from that, John and I did, and we were like, you know, we had been to your, well, you were on our show at the Voices of Dentistry last year, and then chit-chatting back and forth through chats, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing this. And then we take that course, which we were already signed up for, mm -hmm. and, and then that just energized it. So that was in June. So that was all science. That was all science. Right. That was in which, June. Which, by the way, just, just for my point, you learn lots of science. Come up here. You learned lots of science, but it meant nothing to your practice. It didn't change my practice yet. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. It did, did. That's why I argue against science. science learning. Okay. It was all science. I, I know science is necessary. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. a start. All but, it's a start. But, but let me, I want to come, because this is an important point for me, okay? I don't want anybody to leave saying that I don't think you need to learn the science, okay? I'm being absolutely contrary. Well, the failure that, okay? to that is there was no follow-up in well, implementation. Let, 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 let so, me finish. So, let him, so, yeah, let no, me yeah. finish, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what happens if we teach people to have a taste of success... A taste of success first, they will go and learn and learn and learn and learn. Oh, yeah. Because once you get a success, the app, the next step to getting more success is to get better, to get go deeper in that subject. You want to so, learn more. So I argue instead of taking science first, take the implementation, get a taste of success, so here's and then the, learn. And we here's, just, here's and we, the gal. And we disagree with that. <laughs> here's a gal. Okay. But we but we understand yeah, where you're coming okay. from. Right. I think you understand where we're coming from. Well, so you get to the same point. So in the end, you if know? you want your, no, I'm not going to go there because no, you that's should. okay. <laughs> no, why don't you keep going on the on the sleep? Okay, stuff? no, yeah, listen. Yeah. Because here's what I did: is I came back and I immediately blocked time. I'm telling you, I block. I told my front office manager, I said, "Hey, look, I want you to black block a full day." And I took all the things that Spear and the best money you spent it, in lost production mm -hmm. because you yes, you, you set aside right. time for Right, and let me tell you what happened during that that whole eight hours of presenting what I learned at Spear Education, a whole eye opening and a whole conversation about people and their families and what what sleep apnea has done in their families and look. Then my office manager walks out and she says, okay, when, what are we doing to, do, to get this implemented? I said, you're going to go take T-Bone's course. She was like, well, Jenny's going to be our champion, and we had decided that behind the scenes. And, and so Jenny couldn't take the course. I said, but we've got to go ahead and get started some way. So I said, Darcy, you're going. You met her. You took a selfie yeah, In with August, her. I believe. Yes, yeah. it was in August. So we immediately, Darcy texts me. She says, I'm buying our HST. Let's go ahead and buy one. She's like, I really want to buy two but let's just buy one. So we bought one, okay? We came back. We got Jenny coming in extra time because you said you've got to make an investment, and your investment is into your team. So you freed up schedule for Jenny. Mm -hmm. What that led to is doing testing and getting involved more, and then Jenny goes to your course with my wife mm -hmm. in December, mm -hmm. okay? Or actually, it was before. It was November. It was November. Yeah. November. And then... And then I and then we were we were real close to being we were walking at this point okay so we're four months into the implementation and, and getting things ready and getting ready to retire Jenny full time from hygiene because of your advice mm -hmm. I really had to come to terms with it's what you it's hard isn't it it's the hardest decision mm -hmm. I've but ever made back it was important it's very important yeah and then I hired an implementer mm -hmm. because it takes somebody that understands the business of this. And I thought we argued about how that was bad. Right. <laughs> yes. It's bad but necessary, right? But necessary. He's standing right here. Yeah. He's standing right here. And he was in my office two to three weeks ago. And, and the very next week, the very next week, we sold six OATs. Oh, yeah. And on top of that, Jenny had her first meeting with an outsized referring source on Friday by herself and won over the keys to an external referring source for sleep apnea. Yeah. Now, let me just tell you, that has changed my practice, and you were part of that. And so I want to say thank you. I want to thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your yes, practice. Yes, so, and another thing that what that's doing, what that's doing, okay, is allowing me to free up my mm -hmm. time. Because, because you replace the, the income. Right, the income. And guess what? This is the year that the associate is coming on. Yep. And, and, I, and, you know, we spent three hours 
last time. Last time. We didn't yeah. even release that episode because it got very personal. Mm-hmm. But it was a good personal. And and I appreciate that. Oh, the associate talk. Yeah. 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 I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And so you got in trouble, too, by the way. I and got in trouble? Yeah, your wife came in and, like... Oh, yeah, that's what's new. Right. <laughs> that's why I always right. what, What's new, man? Right. I'm always in trouble. I live normal. in trouble. When are you getting bed? You're sleeping on the couch. No. Yeah, but that's, anyway... That's a given. Right. So here's the thing, though, is that that has changed my... It'll change my, my life. It one, will change your life. Right. And, and it frees up me to do the things that I want to do. What and, you should be best at. That's right. That's right. And so I want to say thank you because you did blow my mind away <laughs> and, and you really helped me to make those decisions that I needed to make. So thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. But it's by the way, stuff, your story just proves my point. I know it does. We believe I see. <laughs> <laughs> your story proves my point that the science matters, but it's not the most important thing. It's not. Okay. Sometimes that the is. business, you guys argued that the people are taking too many business classes, but the business is what gave you the opportunity to do the rest of it. Yeah, right? but what, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's both, man. We're it's not both. saying, yeah. we're not it's saying business isn't important. We're saying it you got to have but both. Here's what I will say. I, I know I went against you guys. Learning the science and understanding the science is very important as you want to go from a dabbler level to a serious level. That's right. Yeah. Okay, but I don't think you need to know all the science to do dabbling. I think, I th- I, again, we disagree on this, and that's okay, um, but I think it's more important to dabble and, and prove the concept before you go learn everything. John, tell us, tell us how T-Bones impacted you. Well, I think the biggest thing is how we were challenged to think about where we want to be um, in our practice as far as time. You know, time was the big discussion mm-hmm. we had. And was, now you know, we're going to, mo- I want you guys to focus towards expertise, but keep going. Yeah. Time was a big discussion about, you know, well, what, what kind of time do you want to have available? You know, and where, and where do you see, how many more days do you want to have off? You know, and that was a, that was a discussion that we had. And, you know, I'm, I'm uh, struggling right now with the same decision point that Wes was struggling with as far as, you know, I've, I've taken, a lot of the same science courses uh, mm-hmm. on sleep understand kind of where you need to be going, but it's it's a, it's a challenge to go there, and and that's a whole other discussion, which which you know Wes and I were having earlier today about where you go when you are busy enough that you don't really need to be doing a procedure, but you think it's really important to right. do, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. We just got to replace something, right? You have to, when you say yes to some things, you say no to something else. Correct. And that's the struggle. You know, I'm in a small town uh, where it's, it's more challenging to say no to patients when it's a small town business kind of feel to say, well, you need to go somewhere else. There isn't anywhere else to go or mm-hmm. there's very there's fewer places to go. And so that's, you know, but but it made me think a whole lot more about what my next five to 10 years needs to be as far as time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you also challenge us. We were talking about doing more ourselves with continuing education and how we implement that from just from our standpoint, <clears throat> from the dental guys. And you got us thinking about, hey, well, if you want to do this, why, don't, why aren't you doing this? You know, mm-hmm. and so that made us, there were some things. Show, that, him, show him what yeah. we've got going so down. Yeah, some, I saw that earlier. Yeah, there's some things that are happening yeah. now because Good for you partially guys. because you said, hey, look. We live in a world of abundance. That's right. You're passionate about this, so do it. You know, and so we said, all right. Put let's, your money where your mouth is, That's right? right, and we did. And we invested a lot of time and money and, and said, look, we're going to roll out a, a, a course that's going to be that's going to fulfill the things we're hearing people saying that they want more of, and also what's important to you. That's right, something yeah. we're passionate and I, about. And I think it's important to note that that course has an implementation part of it that's four hours long from yeah. a guy that has thirty dental practices. We we basically brought him in because he's an expert at implementation. Yeah, and we understood more after you know I think talking to you that that oftentimes that is the missing link. You it can is, know the not, science, it is but the it's, missing link. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the implementation is yeah. where you actually. You know, the rubber meets the road, and so that was a huge, that was a huge challenge. And I think too, you know, Wes was really challenged too about about making decisions with associateships, you mm-hmm. know, and how and how to look at that. And even though, like you say, the way you do things is different than what some people do, it definitely got us thinking about well, how how do you look for that person? How do you find that person? How do you talk to that person? What do they need to look like? And what's their role in your practice? And the biggest thing we've talked about is so how deciding between whether you want somebody who wants to buy in. Mm-hmm. Versus somebody that you want to just have as an employee. Yeah, it's been a big discussion. This is a big discussion year. with us. Yeah, because you know, if you're not ready for somebody to be a buy-in, because I'm at, I'm at a, a point right a now when I hire person. an associate, I'm going to hire you know you know I'm not going to hire a meatball. Hmm. You know, because that wouldn't work with my personality, T Bone. It didn't work with mine, but then I came around to it. And you know what? That's 
Yeah, we we don't want to go too far into this, but I will yeah. just right. say I will just say that that's a decision that we all have to make. Is that, that's the, it's not a decision you have to make. That is what life experiences will teach you, mm. and you may be forced to make that, or you may not be forced to make that. It right. just depends. You that is one thing that you nobody can tell you, and that you the only way you can learn that is to experience it. Yeah, that that it's like marriage. It's date associateships are like dating. Okay. No matter how good they look on paper, no matter how much you believe something that this is what you want, until you experience it, you don't know. So true. And it, it is, it is, it is, it is. I'm scared so, but excited. You you should be scared and excited because yeah, it's I unbelievable. Here, my, John here, can tell you I'm really excited, <laughs> but I'm also scared to death. Yeah, the, yeah, you should be a little bit. Because, I think it's healthy. Um, here's what I will tell you: Don't give up after your first two or three. I'm prepared. I'm. I really <laughs> am. And. and <laughs> I'm already telling my team. I'm already telling my team. I, I'm not saying that about you. I'm just saying that your standards are no different than my standards, okay? Right. In fact, I would say your standards oh, may be a little bit higher than mine. So don't give up after your first two or three. <laughs> you know it, Michael. You've seen my team. Oh, man. Yep. I love it. I love it. So good. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting year for Wes, man, because, you know, again, this like... But that's the beauty of our profession, isn't it? It is. It is. I haven't ever said that on the air either. I, I, no, think I, I just have, realized that. I think we have... <laughs> that's out there This now. is it's the best there. time to be a dentist. Oh, man, it is, isn't it? You, we have so much opportunity. We have when so I graduated much dental procedure. school in 03, they said it was the golden age, and now that they 15, say... By the way, that's 15 years ago. Yeah, that, that's the platinum that's age eternity. of dentistry. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, I'm going through a total office renovation right now. Good for you, man. Uh, I saw that new chair. It looks like Star Trek. It's beautiful. But that new chair was the emphasis. Now I'm redoing everything because I'm afraid of millennials kicking my ass. Well, everybody's got a nice office now. It's nothing. You know, how about this? So I, I, wanna, I, I do yeah, need to go, but I want to leave your listeners with this question. This is pretty okay? typical for us, though. Look at that Okay, time. hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. So let me leave your listeners with the typical question here. I would ask you, okay? And that is, if I put you in a room of 100 dentists... What would make you stand out? Yes. Okay. And if your answer is we treat our patients well, so does everybody. Yep. If your answer is we have technology, so does everybody. If your answer is we do great crown and bridge, so does everybody. Even though these two will argue with me to, from their, their patients' perspectives. Research they, says no. They, they do great dentistry. I know the research says, the research says a lot of things, okay? Mm. But... Um, it's time for you to answer that question tough. Mm. I did that to myself, and what I said was, oh, I have Sarek and Conebeam. So do six of the nine dentists on my street corner. They have Sarek and Conebeam. And I said, I have a nice, beautiful practice. So do the other nine practices on my corner. I have team that care about my patients. So do those other nine practices. I do good dentistry. So do those other nine practices, even though, according to you, the research says they don't, okay? <laughs> but let's pretend I, I, I have outliers around me. And I said to myself, and then I, had, then I looked through my practice, and I said, my practice aesthetically, cosmetically, hasn't changed in the 10 years I've been there, mm. okay? And that was unacceptable to me because I'm not doing anything in my practice the same I was doing it 10 years ago. It's good. So why should my practice continue to look the same? Mm -hmm. The millennials are coming. The, the endangered species in dentistry is the 35 to 55-year-old because they have to make it another 10 to 20 years, and you can't skate through that time, and you will see a slow degradation of your practice if you don't change. The 55-plus, they can skate through the next 10 years, no problem. The millennials from age 25 to 35 are coming. They're doing a complete, they're doing a, a wide array of procedures in their practice. And uh, my generation's in trouble if they don't make a, make a change. But we have a distinct advantage. And that is we have well-maintained and well-loved practices by patients who will go with us, follow us, and allow us to work on them and learn with them. Uh, and there's nothing that, there's, their time has shown that. And there's nothing millennials can do about that part of it because they just don't have the time behind us. Well, and they have cat, and you should have more capital. Hopefully, we should. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they've learned to save money. But yeah, hopefully a lot of the loans and things are paid off. And uh, so, so we have to we have to do it. We're we're in trouble if we don't do something big. And it's my generation that will see our profession go down a good path or not so good path. Mm. And that will be on our generation. All the things we talked about, as much as I was kind of playing contrarian with you guys, it's, my gen it's on my generation's watch 
that we'll see us move towards a quote unquote corporate style practice, a mm. commodity based practice, or if we'll see our practices move towards a uh, private practice type. I, I think we'll all move towards group practices, but we'll move towards a, a staying private private dentistry. Well, wow, that's that's the challenge, and I think uh, for everybody that's listening to this today, you know, if you've not been challenged and you haven't been listening, so <laughs> thanks for being on. <laughs> thanks for everything you do. I got challenged this time. Are you yeah, kidding? Yeah, hey, oh, man. Yeah, we got to bring it I occasionally. Love it. I love it. <laughs> oh man. Hey, so for everybody that's out there watching Voices Dentistry 2018, give us some love if you like this show. Uh, we want to make sure that where can people go to learn about your stuff, man? Where uh, T-Bone Speaks.com is the best way to get in touch with me. Okay, love it. Thanks. All man. right, man.